In this Godot tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a 2D day-night cycle, including a Stardew Valley-inspired UI. To follow along, download the sample project from GitHub. You'll find the link in the description. The scene consists of a tile map with a 2D camera as well as nodes for sound and UI. We will worry about those later. Let us start by changing the scene's ambient color by adding a node of type Canvas Modulate to the scene tree. For now, set its color to a desaturated dark blue in order to simulate a shimmering moonlight. The idea now is to dynamically change this color property at runtime, depending on the current time of day. Attach a new script to the canvas modulate called daynightcycle.gd. Add a float type variable to keep track of time. Next, override the process function. All you need to do here is add the current frame delta to the total time and compute the value on some kind of function. Let us visualize the intensity of the night for a moment. The x-axis represents time. 0 is full night, 1 is full day. We can use a sign function to transition smoothly between these values. Since the y value should always be between 0 and 1, we need to move the entire function up by 1 unit and divide it by 2. At time 0, the value will be in the middle of our y axis, meaning the game will start at dusk and gradually transition to day. If you want to adjust the starting time, simply shift the graph along the x axis. To start at complete darkness, subtract 0.1 pi from the time value. Next, we map the current value to a corresponding color. In a previous tutorial using Godot 3, we interpolated between multiple color objects via code. This time around, we are going down a different route, defining a gradient texture 1D as an export variable. Navigate to the modulate node and load the gradient texture resource that's been prepared for you. Now set the color of the canvas modulate to the sample color of the gradient texture on the gradient object. We want a blue tint for night, mimicking a full moon's glow. For day, we'll use white to let the game's color palette shine through. During sunrise and sunset, we'll introduce a pink-orange hue, representing the sun's low angle and the blue wavelengths, not scattering far enough to reach the viewer. If you start the game now, you'll see how the modulation color alters the scene's ambience. Customize the gradient texture's color to your liking. However, keep in mind that changing the color positions on the gradient texture will affect when the ambient color starts changing. Let us take a closer look at the UI for a second. It displays days, hours and minutes and has a visual time of day indicator. The UI updates using the setDayTime function, which takes three integers as input, the day, hour and minute. Looking at our sign graph again, we can divide the x-axis of one complete day cycle into 1440 segments, each representing a minute in a day. Since x is our time axis, the full cycle of a day equals 2 pi. We can use this knowledge to our advantage to calculate the in-game to real-time minute duration. To make our lives a bit easier, let us define two new helper constants on top of our script, minutes per day and minutes per hour. We then define an in-game to real minutes duration constant that is calculated by taking one full day-night cycle divided by the minutes per day. On the bottom of our script, create a function named recalculate time to compute in-game days, hours and minutes. Make sure to call it inside the process function, otherwise this will not work. We begin by determining the total in-game minutes passed since the start of the game. We do this by dividing the time variable by in-game to real-time minute duration and rounding to the nearest integer. This gives us an approximation of in-game minutes passed. Next, let us calculate the current number of days, hours and minutes. Back inside the recalculate time function, calculate the current day by dividing the total minutes by the minutes per day, rounded down. To calculate hours and minutes, we can define another helper constant to help us out. Use the total minutes modulo the minutes per day in order to calculate the minutes of the current in-game day so far. Using this constant allows us to compute the current hour by dividing the current day minutes by the minutes per hours, as well for the current minute by taking the current day minutes modulo minutes per hour. Next, we need to communicate these values to the UI. For this, we follow Godot's signal up call down principle to maintain component independence. On the top of our daytime script, create a time tick signal with the same arguments as the setDayTime method in the UI. Inside our 
our recalculate time method, we call time tick emit with our computed values. To optimize performance and avoid unnecessary emissions, the signal should only be emitted when the in-game time changes, not every single frame. To address this, add a past minute variable at the top of our canvas modulate node. Inside recalculate time, check if the minute value has changed from the last frame to the current. If it has, update past minute and emit our signal. Now, let's connect the signal to the UI. In the day night cycle scene script, call canvas modulate time tick in the ready function. Godot 4 allows you to connect signals directly to functions, so all we have to do here is to connect our set daytime function to our signal. Let's also introduce ambient sound. Connect the time tick signal again, but this time to the sound machine set daytime method. The cycle starts at night time, however, we want to be able to set the current in-game time to whatever time we want while the game is running. Time itself is currently passing by uncontrollably fast. We can change the code so by default, one in-game minute passes in one real-time second. Define an in-game speed export variable, which we default to 1, meaning we want one real-time second to take one in-game minute. Setting this value to 20 would mean that one real-time second passes 20 in-game minutes and so on. Inside the process function, then multiply the frame delta by in-game to real-time minute duration and in-game speed. After that, define an initial hour export variable that determines the in-game time the game should start at. Override the ready function and assign time to the product of in-game to real-time minute duration, initial hour and minutes per hour. This will then offset the time variable to the correct hour of the day. One last thing, we can also change the current hour of the day dynamically at runtime. On the initial hour export variable, define a setter and assign time the same way we did in the ready function. Keep in mind that we have to keep the statements both in the setter and in the ready function as by design, the initial value assignment to a variable does not invoke the setter function. When you run the game now, you can change the properties in the editor while the game is running to influence the daytime. Thank you so much for watching this Godot tutorial. Check out my YouTube channel for more game dev stuff.